morning everyone, Lawrence again from the Australian Trade and Logistics Corporation. Today I'm delighted to have with us as our guest, Consul General of Sri Lanka here in New South Wales and Queensland, Mr. Lal Wikramatunga. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for joining us. And also the Commercial Consul, Mr. Abdul Rahim. Thank you, Abdul. Yes. Thank you. So, um, many Australians know Sri Lanka from cricket and um, from our sporting uh, uh, heritage as well. But, um, and also as a, as a fantastic tourist destination that's becoming ever so popular. But in relation to trade and business opportunities, um, what, what are the, how can the Consul here in Australia help Australian businesses identify some great trade opportunities with Sri Lanka? I think it's uh, the right time mm. uh, because Sri Lanka is now a safe place. Mm. They are focused on improving trade bilateral trade between countries and more importantly uh, expanding the goods and services sector so yeah. that it's a larger table to pick from mm. and I'm sure Mr. Rahim will uh, expand on that yeah. and there is a uh, political stability yeah. and uh, Sri Lanka is also wonderfully situated along the trade routes and uh, close to important emerging absolutely. markets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, yeah, as you say, traditionally that, that, that Port of Colombo is, is a pivotal hub right across that whole region. And it's a great um, springboard market into bigger markets like India and other markets as well around that whole area. Um, there's you know, great opportunity for Australian companies to look past the tourism and look at those commercial opportunities for a whole range of those categories coming through. And service sector, you know, there's a lot of expertise in Sri Lanka, a lot of outsourced uh, BPO type of capability as well. And you know, uh, there's, what are the, the key sectors that you believe could be great fits for Australian companies to, to either look at as Sri Lanka's suppliers, Sri Lankan suppliers, or even Australia to supply to Sri Lanka? Are there any key areas or segments? I think one of the most understated products uh, or, or manufacturing areas is boat building. Yeah. And Sri Lankans have uh, this expertise, mm -hmm. and uh, it's about time that uh, both countries looked at uh, uh, that sector. Fantastic, great. And Abdul, similar to Australia, there's the whole colonial sort of legal framework. So from an intellectual property, commercial structures, it's very similar to Australia in that yeah, sense? Very much similar to Sri Lanka because we both countries were yeah. Col colonized yeah. <laughs> yep. and the British colonization. Yep. So same structure. Yep. And uh, Sri Lanka and Australia has a very good trade relations for mm. years. And uh, Sri Lanka, Australia is a very important trading partner for Sri Lanka. Mm. And uh, our total uh, two-way trade between the two countries in the range of uh, 450 to 500 million US dollars. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm talking about the commodities, not mm. the service sector. Yeah. And uh, we do exports uh, from Sri Lanka tea, ready-made garments, coconut products, spices, and for porcelain tableware. Yeah. And Sri Lankan food preparation, spices, mm. rubber, rubber products, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so many products coming from Sri Lanka. All these years, the balance of trade in favor of uh, Australia, mm. we do a lot of import Importing. commodity, yeah. I'm yeah. talking about. But last year figure, we have a uh, favor of balance in favor of Sri Lanka, right. trade yeah. balance is in favor of Sri Lanka. Yeah. Because we did about 200 million US dollar worth of export mm. and the import was 160 million US dollar. Yeah. And we do source uh, many uh, food products also from Australia because a lot of uh, uh, grain and lentils. Mm. Lentils is the largest uh, import product from single largest country right. from Sri Lanka. Yeah. I think uh, out, uh, Australia's uh, total production, 75% of the lentils goes to Sri Lanka. Okay, really? I didn't earlier, know earlier we sourced from Canada, now it is the, Australia is the largest market. Mm. Other than that, uh, we do import a lot of other uh, primary com uh, commodities mm. and also for the manufacturing. Mm. And uh, also the, if we talk about, the, as Consul General mentioned, the Sri Lanka is ideally located for uh, the tr uh, in the largest sea route yeah. in, the, in the world map. 
mm. and uh, we encourage uh, the Australian companies to come and invest in Sri sure. Lanka, yeah. mainly in the manufacturing sector. Mm and to get the benefit uh, of manufacturing and export into the global market. Yeah. As you said, that position is ideal, and yet the, the labor force there in Alba is great. The, I know there's some good investment zones there, and some. I'm not sure what the exact sort of government incentives are for foreign investment, but um, I'm sure there's some great uh, opportunities there as well. But even from a logistics and supply chain perspective, that location, is ideal when you look at your lead times and your, your last mile distribution. So companies from Australia can have the R&D or even the design work here, potentially do some joint venture partnerships or even offshore manufacturing, and then springboard through that uh, Sri Lankan central location right across to a number of markets, That's and it. not just emerging markets, but even established Western markets who are already supplying, getting supplied by, by Sri Lankan manufacturers. That's right, yeah. Because uh, the, we, we have already a number of uh, Australian investment in Sri Lanka. Mm. And uh, for, for according to 2018 figures so far, for, from to the, to the last 10 years, we attracted 200 million US dollar investment from it. Okay. Uh, from, but we are looking at the major investment, like, you know, even we, we were talking to Sri Lankan government to talk into the Luka for the mining the yep. mining sector to come, mm -hmm. and uh, also the any uh, uh, any uh, IT sector mm -hmm. is another potential B IT and BPO, mm -hmm. and Sri Lanka is uh, as you mentioned is a very highly literated, uh, yep. uh, a highly educated workforce, educated yeah, workforce right. and easily trainable, yeah. and and the manufacturing sector the attraction is. Uh, the any com any products uh, manufactured in Sri Lanka can easily find overseas market because we have a free trade agreement yeah. with India. Yeah. Six thousand five hundred products get zero duty wow. enter to Indian market. Yeah. The same with Pakistan. Mm. And we have already uh, uh, FTA with Singapore. Mm. And we are already talking uh, talking with China mm. and India. That is a, yeah. a, a, a economic. Uh, so it's a powerhouse. A, yeah, a powerhouse. Yeah. yeah. And and also we got the GSP plus, mm. but uh, C uh, C General can elaborate on that. Yeah, please. Because we had a peace in the country for after the, uh, so many decades, yeah. three decades of uh, conflict in sure. the country, and we have regained now GSP plus. And any product manufactured in Sri Lanka can enter enter European, European market. Markets. Yeah. European market with zero. At preferential, yeah. yeah. Yeah, preferential duty rates. Yeah, yeah, and that's the important part that. That stability now has been well and truly established, and it's it's very much open for business. And uh, I think Australian businesses, you know, they they look at opportunities offshore, and there's a lot of focus on some of these big markets like China, like India. But if, you, as you said, there's actually a springboard opportunity to work with Sri Lankan companies and potentially JVs or providing that R and D transfer, yeah. skills transfer, yeah. and then use that expertise as a partnership and the free trade agreements to go into these massive market opportunities. Right, yeah. The conducive environment for investment and the trade, mm. uh, I think CG in a better position to elaborate on that. Uh, we have very uh, friendly, friendly procedures. procedures. So if, uh, uh, expatri uh, taking back your profits. Yes, the repatriation of yes, funds. Yes, repatriation, yeah. currency conversions. Yeah. Uh, all that has been seamlessly done now. Yeah. And to give an example, two Australian manufacturing companies that went there uh, originally took 90% of the raw materials from here. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they are down to 40%. Right. Right. And even the, uh, the ancillary spares are now being manufactured mm. in Sri Lanka. These are high end precision products. Yeah. And they're extremely happy that they made that decision to go to mm -hmm. Sri Lanka. Well, you mentioned, CG, about the, the services growth as well, and there's a lot of expertise here in Australia for um, things like air conditioning and all, all this sort of other uh, industrial type services where I'm, I'm just guessing with the, the, the massive tourist growth being experienced in Sri Lanka right across the board, that I'm, I'm guessing there'll be a lot of demand for that expertise with helping with new infrastructure projects, with um, with really doing some partnerships there with with the infrastructure, but also some of the the ancillaries around that roads and you mentioned mining before, so there, there should be a lot of opportunity for that as well. 
extremely. So, uh, for, to give an example of uh, the support services, uh, outside London, Sri Lanka boasts of the largest number of chartered accountants really? outside. Okay. Uh, so is it with the engineering. Mm. So most of the uh, professionals who have come to Australia have surprised Australian authorities with their abilities. Oh, so, and the expertise, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so mm. it's time that uh, we exploited that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and how would you describe, for Australian companies wanting to sell their products into Troika, how would you describe the consumer profile uh, from a demographic perspective? Are there a lot of um, younger consumers? Are they Obviously, they're quite tech savvy as well, and they're probably using their smartphones just like we're here in Australia. And how would you des describe the sort of different segments for, for the Sri Lankan consumer? Well, from a, from a third world country and from a low income, we moved to a middle income. Mm. But uh, if you take the urban areas of Sri Lanka, they are equally uh, affluent yeah. as, as in the Australian big city. Yeah. So the per, uh, per capita expenditure is quite high. Mm. So there is room for today's goods and services of a certain level mm. and Australian companies can make use of uh, that sentiment to sell their products there. Fantastic. It's still big for Australian companies in the dairy sector mm. and they should now exploit other areas as well. Sure, expand that into more, yeah. even finished food products and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, add to what CG mentioned already, Australian beef has a very strong market in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, yeah. mostly yeah. supplied to the five star hotels and supermarket chains. Yeah. And dairy products, milk products, mm. is going from Sri Australia to Sri Lanka. Yeah. And also, uh, there is a big demand for other consumer commodities. Because Sri Lanka also, we are an agri-based country, mm. and we produce uh, mm. agricultural products. But Sri Lanka is a net food importing developing country in the world. Yeah. So we do import many products. There are some shortage in the country. Even we import rice, we import wheat, and mm. sometimes we yeah. import uh, Onion, mm. potato. So this, uh, this when that the, the shortage, uh, it's open to the or the, or the suppliers to supply. Sure. So opportunities are there. Mm. So we also encourage the Australian companies, you know, visit Sri Lanka. Yeah. We are we are we ha we are here to facilitate their visit to Sri Lanka. We are ready to help them. We will take them there. We will arrange the program. We will show them what are the uh, opportunities yeah. in Sri Lanka. What product they can sell what product they can buy from Sri Lanka mm. and also uh, it's like seeing and believing yeah right yeah. the tourist goes okay now the I can add the figures the last year figures is 110,000 Australian have gone to Sri Lanka yeah. we yeah. only targeted 80,000 but it has gone up to 110,000 it's still growing it's yeah. still growing yeah. Yeah. so that is the tourism sector but uh, we encourage uh, the business travelers the business to go to Sri Lanka yeah. And I think the infrastructure growth there with, I mean, I know from my logistics and supply chain background, the ideal location, that position we talked about a bit earlier, was that a lot of the other foreign countries see the, the value of that position and they're, they're taking advantage of partnering with some great logistics companies there in Sri Lanka and, and really developing that supply chain I infrastructure as well. So I think the Australian companies should consider that and, and, and not miss the boat, to be honest. They need to really get, get, get into that, um, that area. And, and grow it. Yeah, already, you know, the major dams in, in the region, mm. China and yeah. India, is already, uh, they have their own position in the country. Yeah. Because they look at Sri Lanka will be the another hub, another hub in Absolutely. between Singapore and Dubai. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and it's traditionally positioned that way anyway. That's right, yeah. Um, I mean, the whole, that whole, col 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 the col colonialization yeah. that yeah. came through was because of that, that uh, ideal position. Yeah. That's right. So um, it's just it's coming back full circle with a whole range of new technologies, new infrastructure. Yeah, and also we are also looking at uh, you know the know how to come to the country. Mm. Sri Lanka we have easily trainable workforce. Yeah. The labor cost is less, yeah. and the facilities are there. Mm. But government gives number of incentives. We have number of export processing zones in the country. We have eight. Now export processing zone in the country. Yeah. So, so can I just stop you on that one, yeah. Abdul? So the export processing zones, is that similar to a free trade zone That's in some right. of the Asian markets? Yeah. Is yeah. it pretty Same. much the same? Very, very much same. Yeah. Because you can bring uh, bring the bring the capital mm. and capital products. You can do a manufacturing. Yeah. It's a hundred percent no tax. Yep. And you can manufacture, and ninety percent of the product has to be exported. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that, again, ties into what we talked about with the free trade agreement. So if, yeah. if all of the local um, inputs and the local uh, basis obviously meets a certain criteria for each of the FTAs, then it enables that company then to export as a free trade product out of it. Uh, of Sri Lanka. So to eligible to uh, export under the free trade agreement, only you need 35% of the local, local value addition. Okay, great. That's what I was going to ask what the local yeah, value yes. content is. Yeah. yeah. So that's and that's uh, that's a very generous 35%. I yeah. think that's very achievable by most companies. And and towards logistics, uh, the Colombo port is being expanded. Mm. They're handling more TEUs than ever before. Yeah. And their ambitious program is to double that yes. in the next two to three years. Yeah. And all this is because of the proximity to markets yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the agreements we have. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, uh, we talked about the cricket as a part of a quick introduction, but I mean, we know being here in Australia that. Very, very much ideal person to talk <laughs> about cricket. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's. In, I mean, I'm, I'm based in Melbourne, so we're a sport mad state. And sport is a very much a good way of, of building relationships, which we know relationships are critical for business. And there's a there's a, a great love between Australian comp, uh, Australian people and Sri Lankan people around sport, and that you know they they enjoy a, a great um, uh, share of love of cricket, but not just that, but they've got rugby and other things as well, and, and soccer or football. Well, yeah. cricket has been one of the, the, the sports that has brought Australians and Sri Lankan people mm. together. Uh, I can speak on cricket because I was also treasurer of the Sri Lanka oh. Cricket Board for many years mm. and uh, been on tours uh, to Australia and handled tours from Australia. So uh, Australia was also the first country uh, when Bob Simpson was manager mm. and Alan Border was captain to race there, put up their hand to come to Sri Lanka after the strife we had, mm. and which opened the doors for other countries to come in. And they have been great supporters of Sri Lanka cricket, and uh, we've enjoyed playing uh, uh, Australians. Uh, Australian uh, coaches have uh, trained the Sri Lankan mm. fast bowlers. Mm. It was Tyson and Lily who opened the doors for the Sri Lankan fast bowlers to be trained at MRF in Indian mm. Academy. So uh, cricket uh, has been uh, conduit between the two countries. Mm. We have also had high level uh, exchange of uh, between uh, political authorities. Mm. We had the Australian Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister visiting Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President and Prime Minister and Foreign Minister uh, have visited Australia in recent times mm. because both countries realize uh, the friendship, people to people friendship, and that uh, there can be a lot of advantages mm. to both. Yeah, and all that adds up to the ease of doing business. I mean, we don't Absolutely. really have a communication barrier. Everyone pretty much speaks English in business there. Right, yeah. um, as we talked about before, the, the legal frameworks are almost almost identical, very similar. Yeah, uh, the new era in the mm. Australia-Sri Lanka trade relations, when the Turnbull, a former Prime Minister of Australia, when he visited Sri Lanka, we signed an agreement, mm. trade and investment framework agreement, yeah. TIFA. Yeah. So that's to bring, you know, both economies together yeah. and to identify what are the opportunities for uh, collaborations yeah. in the economic sectors and uh, we get a lot of uh, Australian aid programs, mm. especially now the last year, we get a lot uh, more funding from Australian government for in, uh, to develop the tourism sector, yeah. Sri Lankan uh, tourism sector, mm. and train uh, the people engaged in the travel industry. Yeah. So that uh, paid very well, you know, because we get a lot of advantage of that. Yeah. So similar like that, you know, because another sector is agriculture sector yes. of Sri Lanka, mm. because uh, Australia is well ahead of uh, Sri Lanka's uh, agricultural sector, mm. and we want to bring know-how from Australia. Yeah. And now, after end of conflict in Sri Lanka now, uh, almost 10 years now, because a lot of a land is open yeah. for uh, uh, cultivation. Mm. So uh, we want, you know, know how to come in, in fund to come to, you know, uh, to yeah. develop the rural area. That's right. There's a lot of opportunity. That, that expertise, Australia, as we know, is one of the harshest climates to, to do agriculture. And we've done it relatively well, really well, actually, for, for many um, decades. And they've done, been able to manage that because they're constantly innovating with how they, they actually grow the agriculture across some of the, the diverse plains between north and south and east and west of Australia. So 
there is a lot of expertise that can be shared and, and use that to, to partner with some great opportunities in Sri Lanka. But yeah. the area yeah. that is uh, uh, growing mm. is uh, the education sector. Yeah. Yeah. There is a large uh, number of Sri Lankan students who come to go to universities here. And there is exchange of Australians uh, going to Sri Lanka too. And the New Colombo Plan is another yeah, program a that has uh, program, helped yeah. in that. There is also the Australian Awards uh, system, which brings postgraduate students to come here. Mm. So there is a lot of exchange between the two countries, which also brings uh, cohesion, mm. yes. which should be now made use of to improve trade. And Fantastic, great. Well, look, I think today has been a, a really valuable opportunity for our, uh, our audience, our members, to, to to think about all the opportunities that are possible doing business with Sri Lanka, and both inbound and outbound. Uh, as you say, the service sector, the products, the agri, the you know the the boat building. There's so many diverse opportunities that have to be thought through and looked at. And you can, if there's interest, please reach to, after, uh, to Abdul Rahim. He can work with you and your team. Yeah. do uh, great introductions as you talked about before and great support. We are at the Australian Trade Logistics Corporation more than happy to, to collaborate and do those introductions with you as well and uh, looking forward to doing some future ideas and initiatives with yeah. you both over the, the coming months and years as well. So thank you so much again for joining me today and, and highlighting all these opportunities to our audience. Thanks so much and look forward to, to staying in touch and having regular updates over the coming months. Thank you for coming by and giving us this opportunity. Fantastic. My pleasure. Thank you, CJ. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look forward to working with you. Oh, likewise. Thank you. Thank you.